What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we will have an example related to uh, special techniques in getting the uh, electric potential called separation of variables, uh, specifically using the Cartesian coordinate system. So the problem reads, uh, for an infinite slot, okay, uh, please refer to example 3.3. In your textbook let's determine the charge density sigma which is a function of y on the strip at x equal to zero assuming it is a conductor at a constant potential v naught okay so if you're going if you still remember the um, example 3.3 something like this so this is your uh, this is your z y and then your x-axis and there are two infinitely long metal sheets that are parallel to each other one is in here and the other one is here Okay, so at x equal to 0, and the charge density varies with y. Okay, the conductor is at potential v naught, which is a constant. Okay, so here, we it is important to take notes that the normal direction we set is this direction this is our normal direction so from our solution from example 3.3 so from example 3.3 the potential depends on x and y and that is equal to 4 v naught over pi times the sum of 1 over n e to the negative n pi x over a times sine n pi y over a so here we said that uh, our put uh, our n are add integers so that's one three five etc okay so remember recall from section 2.5.3 which is on surface charge and the force on a conductor so remember that if this is your surface the normal unit vector is the normal is the unit vector perpendicular to your surface and the charge density associated with this is equal to negative epsilon times the partial derivative of the potential with respect to the normal direction okay so in our case here the normal direction is x hat okay so therefore the charge density is now equal to negative epsilon naught times the partial derivative of your potential with respect to x so this is equal to so this is 4 v naught over 5 times the sum for all available i's which is odd 1 over n sorry n this should be n
e to the negative n pi x over a sine n pi y over a. And we're going to evaluate it at x equals 0. So, this constant can be placed outside. So, this becomes negative epsilon naught times 4 v naught over pi. Then, we take the sum. Because the sum is over n, so we can take that out here. And then, we uh, integrate, uh, sorry, differentiate uh, this function. So this is a sum of 1 over n times the derivative of this. This is constant with respect to x, so we, we will maintain this one. So let's differentiate e to the negative n pi x over a, which is negative n pi over a times e to the negative n pi x over a. Then sine n pi y over a. Then we, we evaluate it at x equal to 0. So from here, we can actually do some cancelling. So we can cancel pi with pi. We can cancel n with n. We can also cancel this double, these two negatives. Then we take out a to the other side, and this is equal to 1 because x is equal to 0. Okay, so the final answer would be. Sigma is a function of y is equal to 4 times epsilon v naught over a times the sum of n for odd integers times sine n pi y over a. So this is our answer. Okay, now I have to. I have a challenge for you. Now, as you remember, the exact solution. So the exact solution. Remember, this is just a series, an infinite series. So if we have an exact solution, is 2 v naught which has been discussed with you before and this exact solution involves a sine function and inverse tangent and a hyperbolic uh, hyperbolic sine function by x over a I showed that the sigma is now equal to two epsilon v naught over a so 1 over sine pi y over a. okay so this ends the solution to this problem from Griffith's fourth edition that's problem 3.14 so don't forget to hit the subscribe button thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye